Welcome to All Christian Fellowship. We are a caring and equipping church influencing the world of God's love. And I think you know, one of the best ways to spread God's love is by praying for the coming and establishment of His kingdom, right? This is the second video of the series on the Lord's Prayer. And let's take another look at Jesus' words. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In this second video, we are not yet ready to investigate Jesus' prayer. First, we need to learn some peculiar facts about this prayer. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus prays at seven significant times. He prays at other times too, I know, but Luke demonstrates that these seven moments are really special. His baptism, after miracles, before choosing the twelve apostles, just before Peter declared him as the Messiah, at the transfiguration, before teaching the Lord's Prayer, and during the agony on the Mount of Olives. Now, in Mark's Gospel, Jesus commands us to pray for some other matters, such as uh, uh, coming with confidence before God, forgiving other sins, uh, the destruction of Jerusalem, and helping us not to fall into temptation. Now, in the Gospel of Matthew, in addition to the Lord's Prayer, Jesus commands us to pray for our persecutors. Matthew also shows that as a Jew, Jesus said the daily prayers of his people taken from the Old Testament, such as the famous Shema Israel and Psalms 146 to 150. The Lord's Prayer is so called precisely because of its relevance. It marks a distinction between Jesus' followers and any other religious people. It reveals the identity of Jesus' disciple as agents for the realization of the kingdom of God here on earth. And another curious aspect, Jesus wanted his disciple to understand how they should live and develop their relationship with God. Why then is this prayer so short? People are usually surprised to realize that even though it is one of the most important in the entire Bible, if not the most important of all, uh, this prayer does in fact take less than 30 seconds to say. That's right, 30 seconds. It looks like neither the amount of time nor the words are the most important thing and the most important prayer. However, by far the most peculiar fact of this prayer is that although the Gospels make it clear that Jesus prayed on numerous occasions, there is only one single mention of Jesus teaching his disciples to pray. That's right. And he did this because they asked for it. Luke tells that Jesus' disciples saw John the Baptist teaching his followers to pray. Not wanting to copy John's prayer, Jesus' disciples came to their master to request uh, a prayer that would distinguish them from others. Interesting perception, isn't it? They went to Jesus and received this remarkable instruction on how to properly speak to God. And if you have read the Gospels and the, the interactions between Jesus and his disciples, you know that the disciples are honestly portrayed, right? They have countless limitations. They cannot understand Jesus' plan and ministry. No, they struggle to believe Jesus is God. They cannot grasp God's actions through Jesus in the establishment of his kingdom on earth. Why? Because they are ordinary people, neither worse nor better than us. They are who we are, human beings. They usually have a hard time understanding what Jesus is doing. However, in this episode, they outdo themselves. They hit the bull's eye. They hang around while Jesus went off to pray and take an interest in what he is doing. And one of them, we don't know who, comes to Jesus to utter what history has eternalized as one of the most critical request is a human being can make to God. Lord, teach us to pray. Apart from Peter's words declaring that Jesus is the Messiah and later saying that only Jesus has the words of life, these are probably the wisest and most 
most intelligent words ever said by one of Jesus' disciples. You see, they don't just show that we too can come to God for help uh, concerning our relationship with Him. They also show that for that disciple to ask Jesus such a question took courage and respect, boldness and humility, wisdom as well as awareness of His own ignorance, and above all, trust and faith. And you know, a lot of faith. How can you even think about coming to God to ask Him about your very relationship with Him Himself? Well, this is so much more relevant than we typically think. Sometimes I find myself thinking that if that disciple had not had the insight to ask Jesus how to talk to God, perhaps we will never have learned about, about the marvelous path to God provided by prayer. Have you ever felt that your prayer life is far below what it should be? Have you ever been discouraged to pray, not knowing which words to choose, feeling, feeling weak or not worthy to talk to God? Then know that this is precisely what happens to each of us, including well, including Jesus' own disciples. There is more than one way to pray. There is not set time or place to talk to God. No, perhaps you have been offering beautiful prayers to God without even being aware of it. Every time you cry for help when you are in trouble, you are praying. Every time you are silent when you see something pretty, you are praying. Every time you stop to listen to the fantastic sounds of nature or a beautiful piece of music, you are praying. Every time you contemplate and fill your heart with joy because of a, a work of art or even when you can't see art in the daily happenings of your life, you are witnessing God's hand in everything that exists and you are praying. Now, what about the Lord's Prayer being a frame or, or a model for our prayers? Does it not contradict what I have just said? No, it doesn't. Because many times we follow Jesus' pattern of conversation with God, we don't use words. This prayer is a model showing what words we should speak to God and how we should strive to keep in touch with God. You see, Jesus' words clarify God is expecting us to say such words. I know God is there waiting for my words precisely because of the attributes of every single word in this model presented by Jesus. And think again, and you will see that this premise is evidence enough to eliminate any kind of doubt you have about your prayers not working, especially when you think that what you say is not being heard heard by anyone. You see, not receiving an answer to your prayers does not necessarily mean that God is not listening to you. It may be that the kairos of God, the perfect time, has not yet arrived. Or it may even be that God has already responded and has already acted, and the problem is our, our slowness in recognizing God's action around us. To pray is to have a pleasant conversation with God. We have friendly conversation with those we have relationships with, right? And the more we know the people we talk to, the more we know about their plans, about their, their concerns, about their achievements and their insecurities and their, and their potential. The more intimate our relationship with God, the more we realize His actions in our lives and in the world. And that is why the Lord's Prayer is so unique and relevant. We will look at each aspect of it in detail in the following videos. But for now, you must realize that our Father in Heaven shows how you should address God. Hallowed be your name reveals who God is. Your kingdom come indicates God's plan of action. Your will be done trusts God's way. On earth as it is in heaven manifests the reality of the new creation. Gives us today our daily bread, relies on God's grace. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors, manifests the starting point of our understanding of God's redemption. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, highlights our agreement for a sanctified life. And yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever is the sign we want to surrender and get rid of our pride and selfishness. And that is why 
we still say the Lord's Prayer today. Remember, this is only the second video in our series on this famous prayer of Jesus. Stay tuned for upcoming messages. It is time to pray. It is time to talk to and listen to God. All the best to you and your family. Be in peace. Bye now.